morning everyone um today i'm going to be doing a review on the bauer mock glove and blocker um this is pro game ready palm um all white i don't know something about all white just i'd rather it over colors anyway so i'll start with the glove um so a little bit of history i started off with uh, reebok 8k i do believe um, went to a CCM 590, then to a Brian, uh, Vaughn V5, I think, um, and then to a Brian's Genetic 4 Pro, I think, and then I just got this one because the Genetic was all worn out. Um, so this is technically the same sort of break as the CCM 600, allegedly. I find it's a bit different. I don't can't really explain to you how I find it different, but I, I, I find it is different. Um, so right off the bat... The glove is pretty big. Um, I I can't open it very well right now, but uh, this is this is um, I got about probably eight or nine games on on both the glove and the blocker, um, so I think I can give a pretty good review on it. Actually, probably more on the glove because the blocker came in about a week after. So um, nice big pocket, skate lace pocket. It is a floating tee kind of thing. I'll show you uh, when I open it up in the back there. Um, construction's really good. There's no uh, loose material or uh, anything sticking out that shouldn't be sticking out. Um, the foam's inside. There's the XRD foam just in here, I do believe, um, for rebound, dampening, uh, and protection. As far as the protection goes, this is a really, really good glove. I haven't had... The only stinger I had, what I think it was this one right here, and that was a slap shot, really good slap shot. Um, that one didn't hurt I felt it but that was the only one that really kind of like I said didn't hurt it stung a little bit but it wasn't that bad the rest of them uh as you can see I've caught quite a few in the palm no problems whatsoever um one thing I have noticed about this glove is if you get a puck anywhere in the cuff it shoots out the rebound kind of far it doesn't deaden the it doesn't deaden the rebound like I would kind of almost like it to um, it shoots it out. It's kind of like the board of the of the blocker. It shoots it out fairly hard uh, away from you. I have gotten I have got one scored on me once because it shot it out, and it just happened to be a, a forward standing right there, and he put it in the net. So, you know that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So, um, closure right out of the box. It was really really good. Obviously, it's you know. Still has to be broken in a little bit, but the closure was very, very good. Uh, big fan of that. It was the best closing glove I think I've ever had out of the box. Backhand protection. This is a big thing for me because of my RVH. I'm not very, I really don't, I don't have the best glove position when I'm hugging posts and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, I took one off here, 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 and here. Uh, I haven't felt any of these pucks. Um, they don't hurt nothing nothing came th nothing um, you know made the back of my fingers hurt or anything like that which is a big thing my Brian's um, it was okay but if I would have got this one in the Brian's it would hurt um, this one didn't feel it it was really really good so one thing that I don't like about this club that I actually had fixed was when you open this up this strap this strap right here does not come with the glove. I actually got this put in my uh, by uh, my local hockey shop because I'm used to having a strap over your fingers, strap over your knuckles or your back of your hand, and then a strap over your wrist. This glove does not come with a strap. Three straps, it only comes with two. So let's just pretend. This is not very easy to do with one hand. Let's just pretend that this strap is not there. It's gone. And it's black in here because I wear a... Um, a glove inside it's a black glove um it's a golf glove but it's like an all-weather golf glove and i'll explain why i wear that here in a minute anyway so you have your strap that goes over your finger stalls in there this strap originally it comes there's two um, loops here that you can use there's one that goes over the back of your hand this one it would cross over towards your wrist but it wasn't comfortable for me um so i got this strap put in and I actually crisscrossed them so I put this one to the back and then this one which is tied into the thumb stall that's where I got it tied into I put it over here I wear my glove it's nice and tight I like a I like a glove to be really really tight to my hand 
Um, I don't like a loose glove. So this one, it, it, it does fit a little bit looser, I find, especially when it starts to get wet and sweaty. It slides around quite a bit. This material in here, it's nice and plush. It's nice and comfortable, but once it starts to get you know, sweaty and everything like that. I find my hand slipped around quite a bit. Um, and there was actually a shot. It was a fairly hard shot that came in and I caught it and the glove almost popped off my hand because it was so loose and I had it as tight as it'll go, but that's actually another reason for the glove. My, it's a foot joy, all weather golf glove that I happen to have in my golf bag. And I figured I'd try it. Once it starts to get wet and the glove gets wet, that really grips very well. Um, and my hand doesn't slip around anymore. Plus with this extra strap really tightening it down, I don't have any issues anymore with that. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I've had to do. So if you prefer a glove that is really, really tight to your hand, that you don't want it to move or anything like that, you know, this is a good glove. Don't get me wrong, but maybe look, uh, look for something else, maybe a Brian's or something like that. Or if you do end up getting this one, maybe you consider putting an extra strap and maybe wearing a glove underneath to make it work. My hand is, um, I don't, I don't guess it's an average hand, like a, any other mechanic glove or a nitrate glove. Um, I wear a large, so, you know, average hands, I guess. Um, that's just my personal preference. Um, so one thing that I actually did have issues with is this back strap or this back piece right here, the way that they have it, the way that Bauer put it on here, it's hard to explain, but it, it got in the way of my chest protector and it felt like, it felt like the glove was like, I couldn't move my wrist or anything like that. So I had to stretch this out. I'm actually thinking about cutting these little elastics off. So it would just be free flowing. That would be probably what I'm going to end up doing just because I find this gets in the way of my, of my arm floater. Um, and then it restricts my movement, but you know, it's not too, too bad right now. I think I got it pretty well figured out. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that's that. Um, so yeah, overall glove, really, really like it. Um, catches pucks really well. Uh, protection's really good. Um, like I said, if you have a smaller hand or you prefer a tighter glove, maybe you think about getting something else or getting an, uh, an extra strap put in, um, or just, uh, wear a glove underneath or something like that. As far as dur durability goes, um, I do actually have a Nick right there. Not 100% sure where that's from. It might have been a skate. might have been something. It might have been there when I bought it. I really don't know. I just noticed it the other day. Um, so durability. I know Bauer's kind of always been a little iffy about it. So far, so good. Um, you know, I don't have any issues as of right yet. Um, but anyway, that's, that's that. And there's my cat. So going on to the blocker. Um, a little bit about my history with blockers. I started off again with Reebok 8K. Went to a Reebok Premier, the lower lower line Premier, I think it was a 14K. Um, and then I went to a Bauer Reactor, which is kind of like a Vapor, I guess. This is a Supreme line, more of a Vapor line. And then I went to a CCM Premier 2. And then I went, actually, there was a Bauer, the original Bauer Odin line that came out. Um, I was using that for a while and then I went to back to the CCM and then I went back to this. Um, the reason why I went back to a Bauer is because I really, really missed the rebound. Um, it really, it gives really, really, really good rebounds. Um, as you can see, I've caught pucks pretty much everywhere in this blocker board and the rebounds are really, really good. They pop out really nice and it makes a nice crisp, crisp sound to it. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I did do that. Plus the finger protection on the Bauer is top notch. As you can see, I'm not the best with my blocker, and sometimes I do get pucks in the fingers. And this is, like I said, after eight or nine games or something like that. This was a pretty good shot. This one just kind of grazed, but I haven't felt anything. The finger protection is really, really good. It wraps around very nicely. Your fingers, you can actually adjust how tight the finger stalls or the finger protection is to your fingers. I had to loosen it up quite a bit because I found when I was trying to reach for stuff, this flap was, like, in the way. So I couldn't, you know, grab my water bottle or grab the door handle in order to get out of the locker room. Um... In the back of the fingers, there's a very, very thin layer of what I think it is pour-on foam, uh, just to give an extra layer of protection just in the back here. Um, the the palm itself is very, very thin. Uh, I think it's just to reduce weight, but my hands being, you know, average, it fits really nice. There's no extra, you know, it's not too, too big or anything like that. One thing that I did notice, 
Now the Hyperlite, which is the vapor side of Bauer, has this, but this one doesn't. There's no foam pillow in here. I don't know if that's what you would actually call it or not. But most blockers, there's a foam pillow here on just between your thumb and the, and the board. Now there is a zipper here and there is an empty void in here. So if you wanted to, you could grab, you know, probably a piece of a yoga mat or some something like a a really light foam and stuff it in here if you wanted to for some extra protection but i haven't really felt a need for it yet also i also haven't really got any pucks in this area i have got a couple you know when they're coming out my chest and they happen to hit my uh, my blocker before they come in and settle in my chest um so that is something that you could should be aware of as far as the index finger protection, you do have this piece of foam that is Velcroed in, so you can move it up, down, left, or right, whichever way you want. Match that with your your already existing finger stall with Poron in there. Um, the finger protection is really, really well, really, really good. Um, I do use a, uh, I think it's called a goalie wedge. It's on my stick only because I injured my index finger uh, at work and it's kind of sensitive, so any sort of vibration or anything like that, it really does hurt. Um, so I do have some extra protection here, but that's another reason why I bought this blocker is because my CCM was lacking in finger protection, um, and I use my hands for work. I'm a diesel mechanic, so I gotta make sure that my hands, you know, that's what makes my money is my hands, so I need to, I need to be able to, uh, you know, keep safe, I guess. Um, so another thing, another difference between the mock and the hyperlate is actually the hand position of the blocker. So the hand position of this blocker, I find is pretty well right in the middle or a little bit up. So it helps. So it's hard to explain. You have more board below your hand with this model rather than the hyperlate. You would have more board above your hand with the hyperlate because of the way that the, the, the hand position is. So me, I have trouble, and I'm getting better at it. Um, shots just above my pad and just below my blocker. I get beat there quite a bit. High, shots high, I'm fairly good at. So this blocker was right for me because in my natural hand position, there's more blocker facing towards the ice between my pad and the bottom. So I do, as you can see, catch some pucks in the lower areas. If I was to use a hyperlite, I might be get I might get them, but this one would have been a goal for sure, and this these two probably a goal as well, just because more of the board would be up higher. So that's why I got this model. If you're if you get beat higher and you don't have issues with you know lower shots, then maybe think about the hyperlate because more board's going to be up high. That's food for thought. Now the cuff, it's a very very free moving cuff. I have no restrictions whatsoever. This part here is actually sewn in, so it's not adjustable or anything, but I find I don't really have an issue with that. Um, I wear my blocker really loose on my arm because this is what I, you know, I, I take my hand out to take a drink of water or, you know, uh, wipe sweat from my eyes or anything like that. So this, this I stay loose. The only thing that I really don't like about this blocker is this little leather tab that I'm assuming is there to kind of help you pull, pull it on. This I find gets folded underneath as you're playing and it's, you don't notice it, but it's just kind of annoying, I guess. Um, so same thing, the, the glove, the blocker, the quality of it. Um, very, very good. There's no loose material. Sometimes on the blocker board itself, you have a, a lot of loose material here. There's a lot of space in between the actual board and the skin itself. This one, it's nice and nice and flat. There's no extra, you know, extra material. There's no ripples or wrinkles or anything like that. Everything's nice and tight. Um, the, the palm, everything's tight. There's a couple of, uh, frays here, but I mean, that's to be expected. You can't be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, it's it's a really good blocker. It's probably my favorite that I've ever used, and I've had probably five or six blockers uh, in my hockey career so far, um, and it's probably one of the best. As far as the glove goes, I think the best, honestly, is probably going to be my uh, my Brian's Genetic. That was my favorite, um, just with the BOA system and everything. Um, I still have to get used to this. This still is a vacuum, and I can catch pucks with it really well, but because of the closure, is a little different, and this is just a bigger glove in general. Like presentation it's a bit bigger so you know and the pocket location is a little bit different compared to the genetic so i'm still trying to get used to it um but like i said i need my hands for work i needed the protection and this is the most comfortable glove that i could find when i was in the market for a glove probably about a month ago 
and the most protection I can get. So that's that. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm missing anything. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, just, you know, put them on the comment section. I will certainly try to answer them. Um, I actually did just get a set of true TF7 goalie skates that I actually wore last night. And I took them back to the, to the sports store to get them profiled because they were flat as a board and I couldn't move. Um, so I will be doing a review on those probably here within a month or so once I get some games in and once I, you know, get comfortable with them and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully I will be getting some new pads here eventually. Hopefully I'll be getting the Bauer M5 Pros. Um, I don't quite have the $2,000 for the mock set, but the M5 Pros are going to be the next best thing. Um, and I'll do a review, a review on those as well, probably towards the end of the hockey season or next season, maybe September of 2023, I'll get those depending on, uh, you know, what happens and, uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens, I guess. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I'll uh, be sure to answer them and, uh, you guys all have a good day.